Hi! In this week's section, we'll be talking about prodigal siblings and the radical grace that God gives to everyone. We'll look at the parable that Jesus told about the lost son and also talk about how the brothers in this story are so much like the characters in our own lives. In Jesus' parable, the younger brother left home to live an R-rated life. When he runs out of food and money, he comes back to his family and hopes to work as a servant. Except that's not what happens. His dad is so happy to have his son back that he treats him like a treasured visitor. He welcomes his son back with open arms. The older brother doesn't approve of his little brother's choices. And he definitely doesn't like that his dad welcomed the black sheep of the family back with a huge party. Jesus' point in telling this story is a radical one. The parable is not about the rebel or the rule follower. It's the father who loves both of his children with unconditional grace that shows us the good news. He's the one that helps us see the crazy good love of our Heavenly Father. You probably recognize these two personalities, the rebel and the rule follower, from your own family tree. You might have been the rebel who has desperately needed grace. Or you might be the judgmental brother and feel like you've earned your parents' love by following all the rules. In this week's section, I will introduce you to my friend Lucy. She has always been sensitive and struggled with terrible insecurity. Even though her parents loved her fiercely, Lucy felt desperate for something to dull her anxiety. She says she needed a vacation for my own brain and she experimented with drugs and promiscuous sex. Throughout her adolescence, Lucy's parents tried to pull her back to them, but she drifted further away. Her little brother Tommy was the opposite. He succeeded at the system that Lucy had failed at. He was a straight-A student, tennis star, and Lucy's confidant. Tommy was the one who discovered her with vodka and aspirin the night she tried to kill herself. Tommy became Lucy's savior and his parents' pride and joy. For the next several years, as God turned Lucy's life around, Tommy became even more successful in law school and life. But through all his hard work, and all his gold stars, he learned some weird lessons about love and his parents. Tommy believed that grace is earned by being very good. Lucy is now a fully accepted and functioning part of her family again, and her parents are thrilled. Tommy is not. He's not ready to give up his role as the good one. All those years of being perfect had to count for something. As you can see through Lucy and Tommy, and in Jesus' parable, and by looking around in your own family, both of the rebel and the rule follower experience blessings and burdens. The lost child struggles with so much heartache. This is the one that learns lessons in jail cells and abortion clinics. But in a culture of grace, the reconciliation teaches the rebel about real love. The family heroes struggle with pride. These children see themselves as the invaluable helpers in the family, the one everyone looks to for answers. These children will understand love as a payment plan. I work hard and you reward me with acceptance. They will kick and punch against the idea of free grace. It will be hard for them to forgive the siblings that they see as less worthy. Except Here's the important part of what Jesus taught about grace. Whether or not we realize it, we are all the younger brother. Our sin and selfishness and self-absorption and humanness makes us the worst kind of mess-ups. We deserve death, treatment as a slave, only the carob pods of the pigs. But God does the same crazy move as the dad in the parable. He runs for us, welcomes us home, kills the best food on the farm, and throws a raging party in our honor. He welcomes us into his family and his arms as his beloved child. We are snow white, forgiven, and loved. We are home. This is a culture of grace. This is understanding your identity as a saved sinner. You are loved perfectly by your Father. You are rooted and grounded in that love. 
you can freely share that grace with your family. It's the Father's words at the end of the parable that can guide parents about how to plant the seeds of a culture of grace in their households. To the older son, the father says, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. The father points back to his son's identity, his value because he has always been part of the family. In these important few words, the father reinforces the family's culture of grace with this important message. All that is mine is yours because this is what it means to be a family. It means to belong to one another in the deepest ways. It means to forgive over and over again. This week, you'll have a chance to think about how your family has shown this kind of unconditional love and what it is meant for you. But even more importantly, this is also the message of your dual citizenship. You are valuable because God has adopted you to be his child. Everything that he has is yours. This is what makes you valuable, not what you do or don't do, not what you accomplish or don't accomplish. Is this unconditional love the prescription in your family? In the activities you'll do in this section, you'll look closely at how the next generation in your family tree understands grace. For now, here are some questions to help you think through how your family treats the rebels and the rule followers. What happens when someone in your family messes up? Is it common for your family to say sorry? When you talk about love with your family, do you talk about the things they do or do you talk about who they are? I love you. I'm so glad you're my son. You will always be my daughter. Do you believe in the unconditional love of your Heavenly Father? Do you talk about your identity as His children in your family? Do you discuss His forgiveness and go to church for regular confession and praise? What about prayer? Does your family come together to admit where you've messed up and to ask God for forgiveness? Do you also thank God for His forgiveness? This love the love of Christ is the deep well of minerals where your family is planted. This love allows you to understand how to love others. It is Christ in you that keeps you rooted in your identity as a saved sinner. When you realize you're loved perfectly by your Father, you can understand how to freely share that love with your kids and extended family. Here's a prayer you could try when you're struggling with how to show grace and unconditional love to your family. Heavenly Father, thank you for adopting me to be your loved and saved child. Please forgive me for the times I struggle to act like your child. Help me to forgive those who have hurt me. Help me to show your perfect love to my family. Help me to be a picture of your grace so that my family can know you in your love, Father. In your son's name, amen. Pray continuously for the Holy Spirit to ground you in Jesus' deep love for you. Trust that God will give you the security you need to love even the most difficult family members. I hope that through his word, you can understand your true identity as a redeemed child of God. He loves you with a grace so deep that you can be forgiven for anything and that you can forgive for anything, forever and ever, for all of eternity, you belong to him.